Leverage and rotation with Gerald McClellan, Terry Norris, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. You mentioned earlier he didn't want to be reckless and he came out very calm, but here he is. He is attacking Julian Jackson. And Jackson spinning around. McClellan is excellent at creating leverage off the lead hand and then using rotational force for his cross. Even though he's slightly overextended, you can see how much force is generated through the rotation. Set him up. He says McClellan is not a nice shot by Julian. As he goes upstairs, no chance of South of oh. there. Julian got a winner right here. Down goes Jackson. A lobby over right this minute. And there's a minute left to go. Can McClellan finish him off? He's down again. You can see McClellan use the hook for leverage, which creates the opening for the cross. It's a beautiful display of rotational force. Norris lands the right hand as they step apart, and now Terry Norris initiates an... Here we see a beautiful example of a leverage combination. Each punch rotates into the next. Unlike McClellan, who overextended with his punches, Norris is able to adjust his stance and his feet with every punch, enabling him to come back with multiple attacks and not lose balance. Norris missing twice with the left to the body by Norris. Another great example of rotation to create force. You can see how little the arm has to do with the power in this punch. It's all generated through the hips. Right hand lands. And Taylor sticks his tongue out at him and says, I took your shot. You didn't. There's the right again, sneaking over. Another great example how Norris is able to adjust his stance to create the next attack. Taylor's left, not there to block it. Overhand right. Taylor Wobbly. Note how Norris changes the power between each punch. He taps the guard and then levers up for power, making it very difficult to be able to defend. Leonard was a genius at being able to transition between speed punches and leverage power attacks. as much seem to think as they rise to their feet. Good right lead by Leonard. Scored heavily. Now Mayweather. Here we see Leonard rotate through a cross, positioning him perfectly for a hook. Now he's a sitting fighter. Mayweather got in a good left again. Mayweather dancing. Leonard pursuing. Mayweather slipped a little. Leonard having him hurt and in trouble. Here a great example of hip rotation to generate the force. The dope moved to the side. Oh, a good left. That's done, Mayweather. Now he's in real. There's the knockdown from the right. And Ray would like to finish him off. He almost went down then from a left. The shuffle. Now the flurry combinations. Martin Tabor is giving him a standing. Again, with Leonard, take notice of how the rotation is generating the movement for the arms. And it's not the arms leading the movement ensuring the body is generating the power for the punch. Rounds and close rounds, the first two. The first thing to note with Gonzalez is how short his attacks are. His opponent swings a wild punch while he throws a short rear hand, beating him to the target. It's not the arm that's generated the force, but the short rotation. Brian has never been knocked down as an amateur or a pro. And you might not have expected the first one to look like that, but there it is. What a oh. great right hand, right on the chin. And these short shots on the inside are doing real damage to Valor. Not only does Gonzalez generate excellent leverage, he has incredible punch selection. He punches over the guard, under the guard, around the guard. Makes it increasingly difficult to defend. What a set of uppercuts. Tasted the canvas on a right hand that was so short and sweet it was hard to see. Because once you lay the like punch, he doesn't stop. Like that. Like Norris, we see Gonzalez transition between tapping the guard and breaking through the guard with power punches. 
Mateo sometimes had a hard time tracking a fighter down who was trying to be elusive, not that the move where he wants them to. He is, Max. That's what makes you get better. Uh, when you study a fighter, you figure out the things that he didn't do quite as good as he should have done, and you tighten up on those Improve things. Improve on the blueprint. Not only is Gonzalez an incredible combination puncher, he also adds angles while he's throwing his punches. Here we can see him move around his opponent as he's still in combination. And Valoria said, step one is, you'd better be in the best shape of your life. In fact, you'd better... Valoria tries to answer in time. Chocolatito comes in front of him. Here we see Gonzalez use a great example of leverage to attack the body and then break through the guard with the uppercut. Valoria got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Before Valoria could throw back. One, two, oh, three, four, right five, hurt six. Big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. An incredible skill. We see Gonzalez transition between light punches and heavy punches through different rotation and leverage. He also changes levels attacking the body, making it incredibly difficult to defend. Hey, change the speed on those three punches made around much longer, Jim. That right hand has thunder on it. Well, Valoria's face is starting to break up. Yeah. Under all of yeah. these punches. Oh, goodness. That right I hand think Valoria, right that was his yeah. last stand. That's who I. Yeah. And now Benzi Estevez is going to stop it. In a round in which Chocolatito was at one point badly hurt by a Brian Valoria body shot. He took his time, regathered himself, got him some energy, and there he came.